Are you finding your Ubabuga chat experiences lack a little spark? Are you spending more time tinkering with parameters rather than getting it on with your favorite AI character? Are you desperate to finally enact that anime crossover you always dreamed about? Or simply have your two favorite waifus finally meet? Well, today's your lucky day because we're about to take a leap from ordinary to extraordinary. We're going to step into the Silly Tavern. In case you don't know what Silly Tavern is, it's an alternative UI interface for Ubabuga that provides a more detailed and nuanced chat experience with your favorite LLM. Silly Tavern provides a variety of features on top of Ubabuga, such as giving your characters facial expressions, improved memory management, the capacity to access world lore, backgrounds, and much more. Today's video is just about installing Silly Tavern and connecting it to a self-hosted pod on RunCloud. However, if you're interested in wanting to make the most of Silly Tavern and would like a detailed tutorial on how to use it, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Before we start, don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell icon to stay updated of new videos. For today's video, I'm going to assume that you already have a RunPod account and have your pod set up from our previous video using the Bloke LLM template. If you haven't done that or don't know how to do that, please check out this video up in the corner and come back when you're done. Go ahead, I'll wait. You can just press the pause button. If you've already got your RunPod instance set up, head over to the Silly Tavern website at sillytavernai.com. Once you're here, you can click on install which will give you three options on how you can best install Silly Tavern. Method one is doing a git install. Method two, a zip install. Or three, you can download their installer. Personally, I found the best success using a git install. So that's the method we're going to use. It's really easy. All you need to do is select the command that they've given you over here. Head on over to the folder where you want to install Silly Tavern. Uh, in my case, you know, I'm installing it on my H drive and I've made a new folder for that here. Head over to your address bar and just type in, remove everything and just type in CMD. And that will actually bring up a command console in the folder that you're in. So just head on over here and all you have to do is drop in this command. Now, this command does assume that you have git installed. If you do not have git installed, you can head on over to the git website. Just type in git into Google and you can just go to download and install it. In case you don't know what it is or you're wondering what this is, git is a version control that programmers use to manage multiple versions of the software that they're writing. Um, it also allows you to connect to GitHub, which is a repository where various programs and pieces of code are kept. If you're not sure if you have Git installed, you can just type in Git and you'll get something that pops up. Now that we have the Silly Tavern Simple Launcher, we just go ahead and open it up and click Install STSL. And that will continue installing Silly Tavern on your system. Could take a few moments, so feel free to go grab a cup of coffee, cup of tea, come on back. So after a while, you should see a screen like this, and this means the next step of the installation is done. Even though it says press any key to continue, if you try and do that, nothing really happens. Let's go back to our folder, and now we can try and click start STSL. And that will give you a new command prompt, which will start loading up and bring you into the screen. And then from here, you click install main branch. And that will actually download and install the rest of the Silly Tavern. Once again, could take a few minutes. So if you haven't topped up that coffee, go ahead and do it now and we'll see you in a few. Great. And after a couple of minutes, you'll see installation successful. Go ahead and click OK. And now you'll finally see launch ST main. We click on that and it will start launching our Silly Tavern. Sometimes though, you might run into this issue where it takes forever to launch up. That's perfectly fine. If it's your first time, it can take a moment. So let this pop up, click OK. And you see, it does end up launching anyway. 
now you'll see the UI for Silly Tavern. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to hook it up to Ubabuga. So we're gonna head over here and go to text gen. And what will happen is it will automatically fill in the details for a locally hosted Ubabuga, which I am going to run. So I have Ubabuga running and I've got it running with the API flag. So just remember to update the number here. It might not give you 5,000, which is the API port for Ubabuga. So just change it up to 5,000, click connect, and it should be working. Of course, this is only if you've got Ubabuga running locally. But that's not why you're here. You guys are here because you want to connect Silly Tavern to your cloud-hosted Ubabuga. So how do we do that? Well, going back to our pod, we head on over here to connect. And we want to come over here to the TCP port mappings. Now, Silly Tavern is connecting to Ubabuga on port 5000 and 5005 for streaming. We do that by heading over to our pod and editing it and putting in some new ports that we want to connect to. And the next thing you're going to want to do is head over to this little hamburger here and go to edit pod. Now, the ports that we need to connect to with Silly Tavern are 5000 and 5005. You might see 5005 here in exposed TCP ports. Just go ahead and delete that and type it out here in HTTP ports. We want 5000 and 5005. Once that's done, save. Head over to Silly Tavern and what you're going to do is you are going to type in HTTPS the ID of your pod, which as we said, is this one over here. Then dash 5000, which in this case is the port we need to connect to. Dot proxy dot run pod dot net. And then for the streaming API, API, you just go ahead and copy all of this. and you can drop it down here. Change the 5000 to 5005. Change the HTTPS to WS. And go ahead and click connect. And if everything is fine, you should see a little green light here. Now, before you go ahead and start chatting, you, there's a couple of more things you need to do. Head over to your file again, and we're going to open this file right here, config.conf. Now, if you've got a code editor like VS Code, go ahead and open it in that. If not, you can just go ahead and open it with Notepad. Once in here, what you're going to do is turn whitelist mode to false. In yours, it'll be true. And basic auth mode to true. What this does is this basically allows other URLs to connect to your silly tavern. In theory, what we should be able to also do is put in your Ubabuga URL, hosted URL here, and that should work. I've not been able to get it to work yet so this works for me then go ahead here in basic auth author and where it says user and password go ahead and put in a custom username and password this is to protect you so that someone else can't hack your system and start using up your run pod time and credits using silly tavern and once that's done what you're going to do is go over to your powershell actually before you do that try and first close silly tavern here and let's do that now. And you'll see a bunch of stuff start to happen here. Press any key to continue and go ahead and just close that. Then go ahead and launch it once again. Now, while that launches, one of the things you need to be aware of, which is a really big annoyance in Silly Tavern, is every time you launch it, it opens up a new window. Now, Silly Tavern doesn't like it when you have more than one tab open with the software, it will start to run into issues. It'll have connection issues. So just make sure you've got everything closed before you launch a new instance of Silly Tavern. See, I got that timed out issue. 
So I'm just going to head over to my Silly Tavern folder and just manually launch it using start.bat. Make sure you use start.bat and not start.sh. And after a few moments, it will load up. Head back over to connect. Head on over to Silly Tavern. And it should now work. And you can start chatting with your favorite characters. And there we go. Like I said, if you want to learn more about what you can do with Silly Tavern, including the types of characters you can load in here, how to set up a multi-character chat room, creating your own personality so that the characters can interact with you in a different way, as well as taking advantage of all of the extra features such as character expressions, chat backgrounds, character objectives, making use of stable diffusions for the characters to generate images, and much, much more. Please leave a comment in the comment section below, and I will make a video all about the extra features of Silly Tavern. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and click the bell icon to know about new videos in the future. Thanks, and we'll see you soon.